Welcome to Testosterothon, 28 movies so manly, your beard will grow its own beard. Rocky II was the sort of sequel that is easy to celebrate. It may not have been as good as the original, but it continued the story in a way that seemed necessary and natural. Rocky III, on the other hand, is a clear product of just giving people what they want. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but this is where the series started to change. Becoming faster paced, less subtle, and more dramatic. Rocky won the title from Apollo Creed in the last film and has successfully defended his title ten times. But after a charity match in which he fights a wrestler played by Hulk Hogan, he is honored by the city of Philadelphia with a statue of himself, an event at which he plans to announce his retirement from boxing, feeling that he held the championship long enough and it's time to settle down with his family. However, he is confronted by Clubber Lang, an up-and-coming boxer with a vicious style who is undefeated and wishes to challenge Rocky for the title, but has been unable to get the bout and is increasingly frustrated over this. Rocky is ready and willing to accept the challenge, especially after the abrasive Lang insults his wife. But Mickey refuses to help him or train him for it, as he feels Rocky stands no chance against Lang and will only be humiliated. Rocky convinces him to train him for one last bout, but things go south as he takes a lackadaisical approach to his training, while Lang takes it more seriously. There are some parallels to the original Rocky here, only Lang is like the new Rocky, an up-and-comer who lives poorly and is not known for his finesse, but for his brute strength, who trains alone in an old-fashioned ways, while Rocky is like Creed was in the first film, the rich champ who has become more concerned with fame and his legacy than having the drive necessary to win. Rocky gets creamed and loses his title, which is made even worse by Mickey's death, which happens very shortly afterwards. Apollo Creed trains Rocky for a rematch, but Rocky's heart just doesn't seem to be in it, and only after admitting and confronting his fears does he put his all into training in Apollo's signature lightning-fast style and is able to overcome Lang. I have some issues with this film, so I'm going to lay them all out right here. Firstly, though I thought Mr. T was great as Lang, I felt his character could have been explored more. He gets a training montage and a few interviews and such, but it would have been interesting to find out what happens to him after the last bout. He's one of the only two major Rocky characters not to appear in sequels after the fact, so I always wondered what became of him. And if he was only ever going to appear here, it would have been nice if he was a bit more fleshed out, at least as much as Creed was in the first film. Another issue that I have is with the presentation of the boxing scenes, which seem more, much more fake than the first two films. I mentioned in my review of Rocky II that the fighting was more energetic and dynamic, but I preferred the gritty realism of the first film. But one thing I could say about both Rocky and Rocky II was that every hit looked absolutely real. In Rocky III, it's extremely obvious that the hits are not connecting, with overly loud sound effects to make it seem like there was an impact. The makeup effects are just also not as good as the last film, which is surprising, since I think they had a bigger budget. Now that the gripes are out of the way, I have to say that this is still a rather good movie. Rocky III doesn't reach the heights of the first two, but it tells a compelling story and stays true to the characters, if not the tone, of the first two films. While the plot isn't as strong and can be summed up as Rocky loses but then wins, the film is largely carried by the acting power as Stallone, Shire, and Ward all put in their usual great performances, and Burgess Meredith does a stand-up performance as the ailing Mickey and gives us one of the best death scenes ever. I also liked Creed returning to be on Rocky's side as the two never had anything between them that was vicious, just a professional rivalry with mutual respect, so it's good to see them become friends. Overall, it's a decline from Rocky 2, but still a worthy sequel. On the machismo meter, I'd give this one a 9, as it's every bit as manly as Rocky 2. Hell, this movie is pretty much a celebration of sweat and muscles and beating the crap out of dudes. For an actual score, I'm going to give this one a 7 out of 10. It's a hell of a lot of fun, and it's a respectable entry, but it's not the best one, and it's not the worst one either.